Hi there everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add services to your ASP.NET Core projects and why this is a very important topic. So, until now, we have been storing and retrieving data from the database inside the controllers using the context, but this is not a good practice when it comes to deploying your application. For security reasons, you should interact with the database in a separate file and to do that, we create services. Before creating the actual service, firstly we need to create an interface where we write the signature of the methods that we then need to implement in the service class. The interface is then what we inject in the controller instead of the context. So let's just start working and you will see what I'm talking about. So I've just created a simple project with just a model of programmers I've called it and in the controller I just made a controller with all of the basic CAD operations and what we're gonna need to do is go to the data folder and add a new folder of services and inside of it firstly we need to add a new item and select here interface I'm gonna name it iProgrammers interface, iProgrammers service, since programmer is the name of the model. And inside of it, as I've said, we're gonna need to write the method signatures, which first we need to write their task because the methods are gonna be asynchronous and then We'll write the return type of the methods, which is in the first case is I enumerable, which takes an object of programmer. And then we'll name it get all. This is the method that we're going to use to get all of the data from the database. And now I just, I need to import the models here. And then we just need to go to the services folder and add the actual programmer service. So just create a class and name it programmer service. This is going to be the place where we implement these methods that we write in the interface. And this is the place where we take the data from the context. So firstly, let me just inherit the method, the interface that we just created. So if we check the error, this lets you implement the interface. Here we have the method that we created in the interface. But firstly, we just need to access the data from the database. So we just write here a variable, a private read only to take the context of the application. I'll name it just underline context as we usually do. And then we need to initialize the constructor where we give this variable the value of the context. So this takes a context as a parameter. And here we give the value of the variable to the value, the value of the context. So if we go to the programmer's controller, here is the index method. So the get all method is going to do what basically the index method here does. So let me just delete this and we can just return here and await. So we'll take the data from a context that programmers that to list async. If we go now to the controller, we need to uh, firstly just replace the context on top with the uh, interface that we created. So I just write here, I programmer service, I name it like underline service. And I'm just, we're just gonna need to uh, fix a bit also the constructor. So it takes the interface. 
And now in each of these methods, uh, in every part where we used to take data from the context, we'll use this service. So firstly, in the index method, we're just gonna remove this or here instead of the context, we're just gonna take right underline service dot get all, which was the name of the method that we created in the service. And this is uh, gonna return us all of the data of the context. If we see here in the details method uh, below, here we have the, uh, we access the context here as well. So we need the method to get a single object from the context. So it's gonna be a task. It takes just a programmer's object. I'll name it get by ID with an int ID parameter. And we're going to need to implement this in the programmer service class. If we see, we see here, if we are checked to see the error, we can, this, al this allows us to implement the method actually. And what we're going to do inside the method is basically just this here, this line here. So if I go to the service class, I could remove this first here and just return the return this line here. The method has to be asynchronous. So basically in each method that we have in the controller, we just need to, we, we don't change the logic of the methods. We just need to substitute the parts where we uh, access the database. So this get by ID method, now we need to implement in the details method here. So just gonna remove this and just write underline service that get by ID, which takes the ID. And actually, this is, I think this is gonna give us an error because uh, the ID here is of type, uh, has this question mark, which makes it uh, nullable, but we didn't specify this in our service method. So I'm just gonna need to specify this here in the interface and in the service method here. So this one give us an error here. So the details a method seems okay. You can just move and check each method one by one where we need to substitute something. So in the post create method, we need a method to store data in the database. So task just takes just needs a name and a parameter it takes a programmer object we can implement the method here let me just find it okay so here we just need to we just need to paste what we copied from the uh, controller and here we need to remove these lines actually and just await underline service dot add, which is the method that we created in our service. Mm -hmm. And it takes a program, a programmer as an object, as a parameter. And this should this looks fine for now. In the get edit method, we can substitute this part here with a meth with a get by id method that we have already created so here just write underline service that get by id and it takes an id let's just look to the next one in the post method of the edit okay so we here see that we need a method to update data so in the interface, let's just write 
task. Uh, it takes an object of programmer. We'll name it update. And it also takes a programmer object. We'll name the variable here as new programmer. Let me just implement this method here now. Okay, so this is an asynchronous method. What we need to write here is just uh, underline context that update and this takes the new programmer variable or object. And then we just need to await and to save the changes in the database. And this method returns actually the new programmer it returns an object so this was basically it let's just go to the controller and just fix this and just substitute this with the method that we just created so underline service that update and this takes the programmer object as a parameter if we go next to the delete method we here see that we can substitute this with the get by ID method that we have already created. And the last method that we need to fix is the post method of delete confirmed. Here we just need to use the get by ID method that we have already created. But next we need a new method to remove or to delete objects from the database. So in the interface, we write task. It doesn't return an object, and but it takes as a parameter a programmer object. So the last thing we need to do now is just implement this last method here as well. Let me find it. Okay, so this has to be an asynchronous method. So we can just write uh, underline context that remove and this takes as an argument as a parameter the programmer object. Then we just need to save the changes. And we don't need to return anything here. Just need to replace this line here. Okay, we just need to write the method that we just created here. So underline service that delete and it takes the programmer object. And we need to delete this. Okay, so this needs to be await. Uh, oh, this needs a wait keyword, and we need to delete this line here. So this is basically it. I think we've fixed every method. Let me just run this in the browser firstly. So this gives us an error because the last thing that we needed to do is add this service in the programmer.cs class. We just need to go to the programmer program.cs and we need to add a service here, which we're gonna write builder.services.add scoped, which I'm gonna explain in a bit what this is. And here we need to take as uh, the interface, the iProgrammers service interface, and also the programmers service class that we created. Okay, we'll just run the application. We reload this. Okay, so 
the index method works because we haven't created anything. We're just gonna check each of the methods now. So we just try to create a new object. I just give there some values. So this worked. Let me us check the details method. It also works. So let's just change here something. Okay, the, this has, this was changed. We can just try the delete method and all of the methods seem to be working. Let me just go back to the program.cs file. When we register services in this file, it is important to note the dependency injection lifetimes in .NET. Each dependency that we inject here, including the services, could be either scoped, singleton, or transient. In these scoped services, with every HTTP request, we get a new instance of the service, and within that request, the same instance is used for every object that uses this service. In the singleton services, only one instance of the service is created for the whole lifetime of the application and for every object that uses it. In the transient services, on the other hand, a server instance is created for every object, even in the same HTTP request. And we chose the scoped service in our case because it is the better option when you want to maintain a state within a request. This was it for this video. As I said, it is important to use services to interact with a database, especially in production, and this is the practice that you are going to use even if you work as a programmer in a company. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more and have a great day.